Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, I welcome you. We're so glad that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship today. And if it's your first time to worship with us, we're particularly honored that you are here. And I want to encourage you and encourage everyone to use our contact form. The link to that is in the post, and there's also a QR code on your screen. Just click on that, and then um, that'll take you to the contact form where you can put a little bit of contact information in there so we can get you the e-newsletter with all of the information about upcoming opportunities to connect and grow and serve and all of the things. And then there's also a place on the contact form for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So I encourage everybody to use that contact form today. I also want to encourage you, if you've not already done so, to gather up some bread or baked good or cracker of some kind, and then some juice or some kind of beverage so that you can join in our Holy Communion for all people. We'll be doing that later on in worship, and you're going to want those things. And then I also want to remind you that we covenant together when we worship online to be a blessing and to participate. Now, when we covenant to participate, that means that we're going to do the things that we're doing in worship today. We encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, maybe light a candle if that will help you, you know, get your communion things close to you, and then do the things that we're doing because you are worshiping God and worshiping with a community of faith. It's not just a random video. So sing the songs and pray the prayers and take communion with us and fully participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And what that means is that the way we may put comments in the comment section, the way we may be gathered with some other folks as we are participating in worship, and the way that we're sending all of this out into the world. We want it all to be a blessing for everyone who comes in contact with us today. Now today is Palm Sunday and the final Sunday of our Lenten worship series, A Listening Lent. We've covered a lot of ground over these last uh, weeks in Lent, and as we enter the worshipful journey of Holy Week, we will explore what it is to listen to remember. I'm so glad that you're here on this special day. Welcome to worship. Please join us in singing Sanctuary. <laughs> Brown. I'm part of the youth group, the Welcome and Inclusion team, and the Handbell Choir. Hi, my name is Joy Brown, and I am a member at DAUMC. Our reading from the Bible for Palm Sunday is Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Let us open our hearts to receive what God is saying to us through this reading. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples with these instructions. Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt 
the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. People were wondering who this person was. Some said that he is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. May God bless our hearing and understanding of this Bible reading. Amen. Please join us in singing Hosanna. I attend Douglas Avenue. I uh, help out in the church garden. I help out with Compass for Kids. I've helped out at the Cookie Walk. And uh, I'm in the choir. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Blessed One, our hearts sing with your people everywhere when we see you. In our mind's eye, ride into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. 
Our lips shout your praises as you empty yourself to become servant of all. Open our ears to listen to you and remember. Open our hearts to the depth of your love. Help us to walk faithfully with you today and through the long week ahead. Amen. Now let's share the peace of Jesus Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments and with one another, with me, and with those folks in our church family. Peace be with you. Hi, I am Molly Barrett. I have been a member of Douglas Avenue for over 10 years now, along with my husband, Rex Gradeless. We are in the Young Adult Sunday School class. I also am on the SPRC committee, and I am the founder of Compass for Kids. Peace be with you. Hi, we're Dom and Fran Williams. We're members here at Douglas Avenue Methodist Church, and we want to say, Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi. I'm Nancy Vereen, lay leader at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I'm Emily Vereen. We're sending greetings to you from Papillion, Nebraska. Peace, Peace be, be with you. Hooray! It's time for small talk. So I encourage all of the children who are with us to get in really close to your screen so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, who is our director of children and youth ministries, and then her faithful companion, Laud the Lamb. He's always along to help as well. So let's get ready right now, everybody, for small talk. Hello, everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud the Lamb and his assistant Cohen, and this is Palm Sunday. Now, Palm Sunday is a really, really important Sunday in our church. It is when Jesus came into Jerusalem, and everybody was waving palm branches and laying beautiful, yeah, you do the palm, and laying beautiful cloaks down for him to come in on, but one really important thing of this story is that he didn't ask anybody to do that for him, but he did ask for one thing. Do you know what that was, Laud? He asked for one thing. A donkey. He asked for a donkey. He wanted to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. Donkeys were a symbol of peace. You would think with Jesus that he might want to ride in on some great, big, big, huge, beautiful horse, but he wanted to ride in on a humble donkey. Yeah. So we need to remember that about Palm Sunday. It's not just about the palms, it's also about the donkey and that Jesus was a symbol of peace. So keep that in mind as we enter Holy Week. Thank you, Laud and Cohen. Have a great Palm Sunday, everybody. Bye. Please join us in singing, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus.
Our reading from the Bible this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 7 through 20. Let us open our hearts to receive what God is saying to us through our Bible reading. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent to Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, Jesus said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with them. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. May God bless our hearing and understanding of our Bible reading today. Amen. It is the sixth and final week of A Listening Lent with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We've spent these weeks focusing in together on the spiritual practice of listening to God, the Holy Spirit, to one another, and to community, all practices which Jesus models for us. We explored listening deep within to the voice of God that is implanted within each and every one of us. We explored listening from the other side, that practice of compassion and imagination called empathy that shapes us in the likeness of Jesus and transforms relationships and communities. We explored listening to one another because we're not alone in this journey of faith and we have each other to help with listening for God and God's direction for our life and community. We explored listening from the edges to those voices that power and empire most often do not want us to hear because they fully model the power turning and transformation of Jesus' inclusive love. And we explored listening to serve, asking and truly listening to what people need in order to serve in a grace-filled way, like Jesus did. And now we've made it to Palm Sunday, our sixth week of a listening Lent. Today we begin the worship journey of Holy Week, traveling with Jesus through his final days of teaching, through prophetic actions and healing, of sharing meals, of sacrificial service and love, and Finally, as he is betrayed, tortured, and executed on a cross. We began worship on this first day of Holy Week with the story of Jesus entering the city of Jerusalem for the last time and doing so in memorable fashion. It's something that we remember every year on this Sunday. We listen to the story and reenact it in our imaginations or reenact it together with palm waving and parading. We tell the story, we listen, and we remember. Listening to remember is a powerful spiritual practice. It's one Jesus calls us to do often. Hear this and remember. Do this and remember. Listen and remember. But on this first worship celebration of Holy Week, I think that we sometimes maybe trivialize a little bit our practice of that Palm Sunday parade. I know I very often happily remember sweet little ones toddling around waving palm branches with the congregation singing at the top of their lungs, mock sword fights with palm branches, smacking siblings in the face with palm branches. It's all dear and sweet and certainly very worth remembering. But Jesus' call to listen and remember today 
is asking us for something more. As Jesus made his intentional prophetic parade into the city at Passover time, it was a tense time in the city of Jerusalem. The Jewish people lived under the occupying and sometimes terrorizing rule of the Roman Empire. The Passover celebration of God was all about listening to and remembering God's freeing the Israelites from tyrannical rule. The whole Passover festival made the Roman officials testy and ready to squash anything or anyone that might call into question Roman authority. The Jewish religious leaders were nervous and very concerned to not offend their Roman overlords, and all of this set the general public on edge. That is what Jesus' intentional prophetic parade is heading into. He comes riding in on a humble donkey to fulfill what the prophet Isaiah said. Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey. The people who saw Jesus coming gathered branches from the trees and waved them, placed branches and their cloaks on the ground to make a procession way fit for a king. And they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. The people listened and remembered. This cry of Hosanna doesn't just come out of thin air. The people are quoting Psalm 118, one of the psalms that the travelers coming in Jerusalem for worship at the temple would sing along their pilgrimage. Psalm 118 says, Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. Save us. That is what Hosanna literally means. Save us. Not yippee or hip hip hooray. Hosanna means save us, save us. When the people cry Hosanna as Jesus rides by, it is a cry that remembers the events that they've come to remember in Jerusalem in the first place, the Passover of God, when God conquers those who hold them in slavery and brings them on the journey into freedom. Hosanna! Listen and remember. Jesus goes on that during that Passover week to prophetically turn over the tables of the corrupt money changers and merchants in the temple courtyard, proclaiming the temple as God's house of prayer for all people. Listen and remember. Jesus goes on in that Passover week to cure the blind and lame who come to him in the temple as the children cried, Hosanna to the son of David. Listen and remember. Jesus goes on in that Passover week to teach in parables, denouncing hypocrisy, calling for justice for the poor and rejected, and lamenting over Jerusalem. Listen and remember. Jesus goes on that Passover week to teach that we must be awake to the injustice around us. You know what? To be woke. The nations that will be saved are those that care for the naked, the sick, the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the imprisoned, the outcast, and the rejected. For when we do for these, we do for Jesus. Listen and remember. Then we finally come to the Passover meal itself, as we heard in our second Bible reading that Sue shared with us. Jesus gathers with his disciples, his friends, to celebrate, to tell of God's saving power through the great Passover story, to listen and remember. You know, food is a very powerful language. It evokes emotions and memories in almost everyone, as taste and aroma are such strong triggers for memory, more so than sight and sound. The smell of sugar cookies evokes memories of Christmas. The taste of barbecue brisket evokes memories of summer cookouts with extended family and friends. In my house, all I have to do is put a little olive oil, onion, and garlic in a pan and turn on the heat, and as the aroma begins to fill the house, I will suddenly find daughters I have not seen all day. They're friends. I didn't even know they were in the house. 
hovering around in the kitchen. That smell evokes memories of love, connection, and good food, and the anticipation that it's time to come on and get some more of that. Smell and taste are powerful connectors. At this last Passover meal Jesus shares with his disciples, we see that Jesus creates a powerful memory with words and actions, smells and tastes, that imprints on their minds and hearts and souls with new meaning. The Passover meal, as we've already noted, it is a meal of remembering. During the meal, Jews recall their deliverance from slavery in Egypt. It's the central salvation story of ancient Judaism, and the meal is heavy with allegory and symbolism. Special foods are eaten in a ritualized order. A special set of prayers and stories are offered and told around the family table. At this Passover meal, when Jesus gets the ceremonial cup of wine and the ceremonial bread, he looks around at his disciples and says, do this and remember me. Jesus imprints a new memory upon the taste of wine and the taste of bread. Not only does the Passover meal ritual include the ancient story of deliverance of the Jews, but now it also recalls Jesus' own acts of salvation and deliverance through his life, death, and resurrection. Listen and remember. But more than even connecting himself to the religious rituals of Passover, Jesus imprints his memory onto the very taste of grapes and bread. In our traditional communion prayers, we recall Jesus' instruction. We remember, as often as you eat this bread, do this and remember me. As often as you drink this cup, do this and remember me. Jesus wasn't just talking about the religious ritual of Passover or the religious service of Holy Communion. I believe he was talking about every time you taste bread, every time you drink grape juice or wine, every time you sit down at a meal with family or friends. In all these times and in all these places, as you eat a fabulous meal, a ritual meal, or the simplest meal, Jesus says, remember me. I don't believe he set this uh, up as a new rule that has to be followed in order for Christians to get to eat, although I've had more than one relative who wouldn't allow us to touch our silverware before someone at least mumbled a quick prayer of grace and thanksgiving. Instead, for his disciples, Jesus wanted them to listen to their memories of him, to remember his love, to experience again his blessing and presence, to recall his grace, forgiveness, and salvation, and to tell the stories, to share the good news. Today, as we remember Palm Sunday, as we come to share Holy Communion for all people in just a few moments, and all through this next week of Holy Week worship services, we will hear Jesus' call to us over and over to listen and remember. Listen and remember through our experiences of worship. Listen and remember as we taste bread and juice. Listen and remember as we smell burning candles. Listen and remember as we touch water and sing songs. Listen and remember as we kneel in silence and shed tears in the darkness. Listen and remember that death, even death through torture and crucifixion, are not the end of the story. Not for Jesus, not for me or for you, and not for our world. Listen and remember. Amen. Please join us in singing, Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether.
It is time for Holy Communion for all people. So if you haven't already done so, get together your bread or crackers or baked good, or your juice, your beverage, whatever it is that you'll be using. Get those close to you and uh, join with me now in our uh, prayers and our uh, time of Holy Communion. Jesus Christ invites everyone to this meal of Holy Communion. Whoever you are, church member, not a church member, with your culture and race, with your age as a child, youth, or adult, with your gender identity and your sexual orientation, in the fullness of who you are, with your brokenness, with your memories, however you are today, you are welcome to participate in this holy meal. We're going to continue in prayers together, and I invite you to join aloud with me in the first prayer that's a responsive prayer. Um, there will be some hand motions you can do as well, and just follow along on your screen. And then we'll have an opportunity later on in our communion prayers for you to offer your own prayers aloud or in your hearts, or you can put them in the comment section. So, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, we do love you and thank you with all that we are. In the midst of our chaos and noise, your voice of love and acceptance, of mercy and justice, seeks to break through, calling each of us by name. We are grateful that even when we break away from you and close our hearts and ears and minds and souls to you, that your love always seeks us out and that you are always with us that you transform us with your grace and that you call us with your prophets to seek that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We thank you for Jesus, your life made real and in the flesh. We remember that you came to us not with political power or military might, not with glamour or fame or wealth, but in humility and love with great compassion. We remember that Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. We remember that Jesus' life with us was one of sacrifice, that he came to confront the hatred, fear, violence, and evil in us and around us. We remember that Jesus sought to throw over the tables of greed and injustice in us and around us. We remember that by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. And so we offer the prayers of our hearts to you today, loving God. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, for all who need your healing in body, mind, spirit, and relationship, especially all who are ill with strep throat, with stomach viruses, with COVID-19 those in the hospital and intensive care units, particularly those healing from amputation surgery and knee replacements, those who are receiving cancer care, all who are struggling with addiction, all who are seeking healing in their mental and emotional health. We hold close all who are grieving and know that you, merciful God, hold them as well, surrounding them with your love and healing as only you can. We lift up our world to you today, merciful God, especially for people living in the midst of the reality of war, violence, and natural disaster. For the people of southern Mississippi in the wake of deadly tornadoes. For the people of Nashville, Tennessee, struggling in grief, trauma, and anger following yet another school shooting, the 130th mass shooting in the United States this year. We lift up the people in Turkey and Syria in the continued recovery efforts following devastating earthquakes. The people of Ukraine continually living with the reality of war. All those fleeing violence and poverty seeking refuge and safe harbor. All those who work to bring help and hope in the midst of all of these places and those working for policy change to promote your peace and your justice. We pray for your church everywhere, and we pray for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and all of the ministries you call us to do in and through this community. We pray for the work of our strategic planning task force as we discern your direction. Send your Holy Spirit in a powerful way to lead and guide us as your people. 
We give thanks for the work of the Welcome and Inclusion team. Please lead, please lead and guide us to welcome and affirm the gifts of all people. Help us to listen to you, to remember, and to act on your compassion and love. We pray for the young people in our confirmation experience. Please guide and bless them in their questions, explorations, and growth in faith. And loving God, we are so grateful for the blessings you give, big and small. We thank you for bright sunshine, for rain, for the beginning of baseball season, for the chaotic chorus of bird song, for birthdays and celebrations, for tests completed, goals reached, and travel enjoyed. Most especially, we thank you for the hope and powerful witness for justice that comes with loving and following Jesus. And we offer then the prayers of our hearts to you in this time of silence, as we whisper them aloud, speak them aloud, as we hold them in our hearts, and as we type them in the comment section. Lord, in your mercy, receive all our prayers. I invite you to pick up your bread and hold it. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, Almighty God, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this and remember me. You can put your bread down and pick up your juice or beverage. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, and remember me. You can put your cup down. And so we do remember your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, and we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love and service intimately bound with Christ's offering for us. I invite you to lift up your hands over your bread and cup. We'll all do that together and pray for the Holy Spirit. Now pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the living body of Christ, redeemed and empowered by his saving love. You can put your hands down. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Jesus comes again and we feast with him and one another face to face at his heavenly banquet table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, connected in all places and at all times, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Please join me in praying the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and baked goods, the juice and the beverages that we eat and drink are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, healing us, empowering us, feeding us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread. Eat, experience, remember. This is Jesus' love for you. Now I invite you to pick up your cup. Drink, experience, remember. This is Jesus' love for you.
please join me in a spirit of prayer. Loving God, thank you for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us, feeding us through these everyday gifts of bread and juice. Help us to remember, help us to love, help us to trust Jesus, and send us into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want you to remember that your DAUMC family is so grateful for all of the ways we join together in giving to serve God and share the love and new life of Jesus Christ with our neighbors and world. Thank you for giving your time, talent, and finances to DAUMC. You can make financial donations through DAUMC's online giving portal. The QR code is on your screen or on the back of your bulletin. You can set up automatic giving through your financial institution or through ours. You can bring offerings to DAUMC during worship in the sanctuary or mail to the church office. It's finally here. The DAUMC Community Garden Blessing of the Boxes is today, Sunday, April 2nd at 11.45 a.m. Everyone is encouraged to participate in this time of thanksgiving and blessing. Whether you're a gardener or not, this will be the first opportunity to rent a box for this season's planting, and it's a great time to learn more about the community garden and the plans for the season. The community garden is located behind the back parking lot on the DAUMC campus. For more information about the community garden, get in touch with Diana Trost or contact the church office. All children are welcome to the annual DAUMC Community Easter Egg Hunt next Saturday, April 8th at 11 a.m. Bring your friends and your own baskets if you can. We'll meet up at the patio off the parking lot at DAUMC. Lots of treats and games await everyone. For more information about the Easter Egg Hunt or helping with preparations, contact Lori Clemmer through the church office. The journey of Holy Week is now underway, and we hope that you will join in this powerful week of worship as we go with Jesus through his last days of ministry to his death on a cross. Monday, Thursday worship with hand washing and Holy Communion for all people is at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary at DAUMC and online. The Springfield Community Good Friday Stations of the Cross begins at noon, meeting at the Supreme Court Building at 2nd and Capitol. DAUMC Good Friday Worship with Tenembrae is at 7 p.m. in the Sanctuary, and online Good Friday Worship begins at 7 p.m., featuring the Black Methodists for Church Renewal, Seven Last Words of Christ from the Cross Service. All of the details for these services are on your screen, in the bulletin insert, in the e-newsletter, and the courier newsletter. And next Sunday, April 9th, all are welcome to celebrate Jesus' resurrection and the new life of Easter with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We begin the day with Easter sunrise service at 7 a.m. in the community garden, led by our guitar choir. Easter worship in the sanctuary at 8.15 a.m. features Easter communion for all people. Our online Easter worship begins at 10.30 a.m. and Easter festival worship in the sanctuary begins at 10.30 a.m., with special music by the Brick House Brass. All of the details for these services are on your screen, in the bulletin insert, and all the newsletters. Thank you for your attention and for your generous support in financial giving, prayer, time, and talent with DAUMC. Please join us in singing, What Wondrous Love Is This?
thank you for joining in this Palm Sunday worship and Holy Communion for all people with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's been such a joy and privilege to have this time with you, and I hope that it has been uplifting and powerful and meaningful for, for you, and that you will continue to join with us for online worship, that you will join with us for our worship services in the sanctuary at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. There's so many opportunities for worship during this Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and again on Easter Sunday. I encourage you to read all about those in the e-newsletter and join with us in person or join join with us online. Remember to use that contact form so that we can get that e-newsletter to you. And remember that there's a place there to put prayer requests that go to our pastors and prayer team. We love to pray with you, so please use that today. And as you go into your day, go with the words of Hosanna ringing in your ears, save us Jesus, knowing that Jesus is coming, coming into your life, coming into the world in new and powerful ways as we travel this week of Holy Week. And know that the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you in love and with strength and with courage. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Mm -hmm.